Hello middle school, um, this is Mrs. Doro and today I am going to show you how to get started with your Zentangle animal um, project, okay? So my focus for this, um, this video is we're going to be doing this rectangle um, that has all the Zentangles on it, all right? So the materials that you're going to need, you can um, use this packet that I gave you if you'd like to use that as a visual reference, or you could go to um, Google and do a search on Zentangle patterns, and there's gonna be tons of patterns that come up that show you step-by-step -step how you can do some more complex ones if you'd like to try those. You will also need um, one of the half sheets of drawing paper that I gave you in your packet, You'll need a pencil, just like a number two pencil will work fine. And you'll also need the ultrafine. Make sure it's the ultrafine, guys, um, the ultrafine black Sharpie, okay? So to get started, you're going to divide your, um, your paper into six different sections, okay? So I am looking for six different sections and six different zentangles. If you want to do more, um, that's wonderful. That will show me that you're putting forth more effort than what I'm asking for. And I always um, give praise and reward for people that go above what I'm asking them. But the minimum sections I want to see is six, okay? So on here, what I like to do um, is I like to just kind of randomly divide things on here. When you do this, make sure you're using a light pencil pressure. You don't want like a super heavy, heavy, dark pencil line that if you want to erase, you cannot erase it. So I'm going to do something really, really simple. I'm holding my pencil really lightly um, so I don't need to apply a lot of pressure. So I'm going to jump up here and then I'm going to go down. I'm going to jump over here. That's given me four sections. One, two, three, four. I'm going to continue right in here, and maybe I'll do, oops, I ran in there. Maybe I'll do something like that. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you can do any type of, um, any type of division in here. If you want to do something like this with different lines, um, let's see, that's four. You can do this as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is completely up to you how you want to divide your paper. Um, one thing I don't want to see though is like a line down and two across. Okay, do something a little bit more freeform, um, a little bit more organic so you're getting some organic shapes in here. Remember, organic shapes are one of a kind. All right, so I'm gonna flip back over to this one. Now that I have those drawn out, the pencil has to go away, guys. Remember, we're zentangling. And the idea behind zentangling is it's okay if you make mistakes. You're just making marks. You're appreciating um, putting your pen to the paper. There's no big rush. I just really want you guys to enjoy the process, okay? So I'm going to start out by, I think I'm going to work with this one right here. So in one of the sections... Um, I think I'm gonna go for this big one right here. I'm gonna start out by drawing a grid. And I'm going to start at one side of the paper and I'm gonna stop right when my pen, uh, my pen hits that pencil mark. And I want to make sure that I hit all the way up to the top. Turn, notice guys, I just turned my paper so it's more comfortable for me. Also, another trick, students, when you are working with Sharpie and you're making lines, you're going to find, you're gonna have a smoother line and it's easier to control it if you pull the marker towards you as opposed to if I push it away. So um, here it is, I pull it. If I push it, 
I mean, that's okay too, but sometimes you can start to get like little jumps if your hand is kind of jumping on the, on the table. I find I just get a better mark if I pull it towards me. So kind of keep that in mind, okay? So now um, with this grid one, I am going to cross these. So I'm making kind of like a checkerboard pattern. Just take your time with it. And again, I'm going to make sure that I am covering the entire section all the way through. Okay, so I have my grid drawn in there. All right, my next step that I am going to do, if I look at this, I am going to be making diagonal lines from one corner of the grid um, to the other corner, okay? Just right across the squares. So I guess I will start, let's see, I'm gonna start right here. That one goes there. As I turn, the other one goes here. And notice um, I'm turning my paper so it's a little bit more comfortable to draw. These papers are relatively small in size. <clears throat> now this one I'm gonna just kind of make it like an imaginary corner there and I think I'm gonna hit it correctly, okay? So now I'm going to jump down to the next one and I'm going to repeat this. And remember guys, those ideas that if you do make a mistake, um, you can add on that, um, remember I showed you guys how to fix your mistakes with a, um, you can enhance it, you can add attention to it, um, you could black it out. And if you're in class with me, I've got a white gel pen that you could use. Um, so there are ways that you can take your mistakes and kind of take pride in them. Making mistakes isn't always just something that you have to be embarrassed about because everybody does it. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna continue on this just with time's sake. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my Sharpie and you could use your fine tip Sharpie at this point. Um, that would be a great idea. It'll take you less time to, um, to fill it in. But when you're drawing the designs out, I would prefer that you use your ultra fine Sharpie to draw. But when you're filling in large black areas like this, um, you can use the fine tip one, okay? So I'm gonna continue doing this, making like this zigzag pattern. All right, so I'm just gonna pretend that this one is all done. And I am going to move on to a different design, okay? So maybe I want to do something that has some contrast um, to what I just put on here. This is part of your art making decision and your process. So give things a thought, you know, like, oh, what would be a really cool contrast against this one? This one is very geometric. I think something a little bit more organic in design would be a really good idea. Something like this, this is definitely organic, you know, one of a kind. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna go with this one in, um, Let's see, I think in this section right here. So I'm going to start by doing kind of like these arches. I think I'll make them like around like this. And remember guys, there's really no um, wrong or right way to do it. 
Okay, this, these two, this was kind of a good example. You can see this one, I was kind of pushing it away from me at a point. So I turned my page and I drew again, and you can see how much um, straighter my line is if I'm pulling it towards me instead. And I'll do one down here. And one in here. So now I'm gonna make like little arches in between them and fill up those negative spaces. Okay, and I'm gonna continue going around, filling up more of the spaces. Remember guys, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. If yours doesn't look like mine, that's great. They're not going to. Doesn't mean that it's right or wrong, it just means that yours is different than mine. And it should be. Gonna do this and maybe that in the inside. Okay, so now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna add in the stripes in here. Kind of like a rainbow. And some of my lines, I'm going to make them a little bit thicker to make my pattern stick out a little bit more. This is called line quality. When I have thick lines and thin lines, it adds more interest to my work and it draws the viewer's eye around your work instead of just like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting and then you move on to a, something else to look at. Um, so it's a really good way to pull the viewer's eye into your work and move it around your piece. I mean, that's kind of the reason why you do stuff is that you want people to look at it and you want to add interest. You can see right here, guys, on these, my eye goes right to that heavier dark line, okay? That's something that I'm gonna be looking for in your work. So after I get this one done, I'm gonna move on to my next section, my next session, or section. Um, that's where I would like you guys to be at with doing this one. And I will be back with another video.